central pressure system has been moving from northern Italy to Poland, resulting in extensive rainfall in northern Czech Republic and southwestern Poland. Lithuania enjoys an early taste of summer. Temperatures in early July rise up to 35 degrees. March and April saw significantly less rain than usual. Meteorologists warn of increasing winds. Flight number 4392 from Bangkok to Copenhagen has just landed. An unknown disease is reported in Thailand in late November. Within weeks, countries in the region experience significant human-to-human -human transmission. Poland is experiencing several flash floods. The water rises as much as four meters in half a day. It continues to rain heavily. The region faces the worst drought in more than a century. The risk of forest fires in Lithuania increases. There have been several minor fires in the Vese forest, but for the time being, they have been kept under control. Dangerous flu reached the Baltic Sea region today. The first incident of flu reported in Europe is in Copenhagen. The flooding has now reached densely populated areas. It continues to rain heavily. A dramatic increase in winds resulted in firefighters losing control of the fire in Vese forest. Over the next days, there are reports of infected people in several countries surrounding the Baltic Sea. The flood reaches all the way to the German border. It has slowed down, but the damage it creates in Germany is still substantial. If the dry weather and strong winds continue, the fire could spread to Poland. All national resources are occupied. Help from abroad is required. The pandemic flu spreads quickly, and by mid-January, outbreaks are reported in all countries in the Baltic Sea region. The flood has had devastating effects. A relatively high number of casualties. Large-scale evacuations of people are necessary. The wind subsides, and fire Firefighters are finally able to get control over the fire. It has not spread to neighboring countries. Schools and kindergartens are closed. People are absent from work. Routine services and distribution of goods are disrupted. The flood has caused serious damage to infrastructure and property. There is increased risk of contamination of drinking water and mass disruptions of vital transportations of food, water, and electricity. The fire in Lithuania has not spread to neighboring countries, but has destroyed 35,000 hectares. Many houses have been destroyed and several villages partly burnt down. People in widespread areas have been evacuated. In countries in the Baltic Sea region, the pandemic flu peaks six weeks after the first case is reported and lasts for four months. 25% of the population gets infected. The weather in Poland normalizes. The flood eventually subsides. First, 14.3 was a number, an idea for a project. The Baltic Sea region needed to do something that had never been done before, to assess macro-regional risk. The region needed to think about risk in a broader sense than just nationally, and needed to discuss various risks that the region can be exposed to. January 2012, the idea becomes reality. Ten countries commence the work set out under 14.3. They start to work together. The number becomes a name, and an initial loose set of aims acquires a concrete frame of action, working together on macro-regional risk. Civil protection experts from ten Baltic Sea region countries group into four task groups. My name is Tuna Bergen. I work with the Norwegian uh, Directorate for Emergency Planning and uh, Civil Protection. And I'm task leader of task C. We are supposed to make this macro-regional risk picture and uh, bring all the countries in to make a kind of a common uh, risk perception for the region. To develop a common risk approach for the region, 14.3 experts needed to know the variety of risks that each country may face. We have the northern part of Poland, Every year they have floodings. We have a part of Denmark. Every year they have floodings. They have another type of floodings in, uh, in Lithuania. Just looking at extreme weather, a uh, severe storm uh, knocks out the power network. Uh, you will have a delay in distribution of goods, food to other countries. Um, and we know today that society is really vulnerable to the loss of electrical power. And uh, how do we deal with this? I think it's extremely uh, dangerous if you think that accidents will not happen 
I mean, uh, yeah, if you look back, the, the things are happening, and and very often uh, disasters that you didn't think could happen. I mean, so if you if you're not prepared or you, if you're not preventing these things, then uh, that would be really dangerous for our region. The first step for the Project 14.3 was to develop scenarios which would then help to identify gaps in one's capacity to cope with emergencies. You may be prepared for something that has already happened before, but how do you decide on what can be expected to come? And that's what I like about this project, is that we, uh, we are making scenarios. So we are imagining that something can happen. It's, uh, those uh, accidents or scenarios will be uh, low on probability but high on consequences and then we bring the experts together and they have to discuss what will happen, what will the real consequences be and how can we uh, deal with this. The scenario we are developing is, is based on uh, the experiences during the past 10 years. The scenario will, uh, by definition, make it impossible for a single state to cope with the consequences. There might be uh, something happening in one country and you don't think that uh, neighboring countries are affected but they still need a lot of information, especially when it comes to informing your own population and why are this happening in, the, in our neighbor country and how should we react. Maybe they need help, uh, there can be a lot of distress and, and the different authorities have to work together. The main challenge faced by the project task groups turned out to be the differences among civil protection tools and systems that are currently being used in the region. Today we have a separated system in each country which is not a comparable about the, the level of risk. There are agreements uh, to cooperate in case of uh, major disasters and there are some, have been some exercises but uh, perhaps not uh, as a macro-regional uh, concept. We believe that each country has kind of a picture of, of what risks they uh, might have to expect and uh, handle when it comes to civil protection. But then again, looking at the area as a whole, there might be common challenges, or well, we know there are common challenges, and how can we cooperate and help each other? And there might be uh, cross-border uh, accidents and need for uh, assistance from uh, neighboring countries. If if uh, disaster is big enough, you will exhaust the country's own resources and you have to look for help. Most countries are just developing their own national risk assessments and, and we find out that we speak very different languages. We use different terms. Uh, there are lots of authorities involved and even within the countries there are uh, challenges in having the different authorities speak to each other and uh, cooperate. And then when you go cross-border, you, you just add another dimension to this. And yet the Baltic Sea region seems to be on the right path. I've been kind of surprised to see how similar the countries are. I mean, even though we are differently organized, uh, there is uh, identity in the Baltic region and it's easy to relate to each other. And, and in many ways we have the same challenges. In the Baltic Sea region, we are connected as never before. And we recognize that the one who helps another is also helping themselves. Such an approach can only strengthen civil protection activities. And that's one of the, the main uh, topics for, for this project is that we in the Baltic Sea area is getting better together to, to work and prevent uh, floodings. When you need the help, then you know what capacity the all other countries can, can give you. The main uh, contribution of this uh, project is to understand that this uh, macro region, Baltic Sea region, have to include all states. But it's a really a uh, region which needs to take care of safety and security. I'm not sure we can prevent everything, but, but if we are talking more together, we can prevent uh, something and we can prevent, uh, prevent a lot of things. 14.3's project lifetime was set for 18 months, but its vision reaches beyond as part of the Baltic Sea region's future and development. This vision is based on the value of cooperation, 
mutual understanding and common approaches, a basis for the success of civil protection activities in particular and macro-regional strength in general. For us it's a really good experience to see how other countries are organized, to, to get to know other people and, and by this time we have an excellent network. It's much easier to contact people in other countries now than it was just six months ago. We have started on a discussion uh, on how we perceive it, risks and how we can uh, cooperate better. The best outcome will be that we can compare the risk and communicate the risk if we need help or want to do common prevention actions. We can manage a much higher efficient for, for doing the best result by combating the fires. We will have a good experience of best practice between the countries to get the highest level of, of education and the highest level of, of knowledge so, so you can really work with, with this problems and this uh, challenge, I can see in the future. And, and, and perhaps one day we can lean back and say, okay, now we are ready to, to, uh, to the heavy rain. When it comes next summer, I'm not afraid because I'm ready. We are prepared, but perhaps we are prepared uh, not to that, what the change may bring along, and particularly when these problems are... We were not prepared to that, <laughs> but it came just in time. <laughs>